Okay, we're back. Is the camera not focused on me as much? It is fine. All right, we're going to fly right through these. Hopefully, I know last year we talked about the playoff games a lot. Um, let's just dive right into it. Uh, we have one disagreement. We'll save that for last. We've got the Colts and the Chiefs up first. Um, I mean, the Colts already beat the Chiefs this year. They've shown that the Chiefs are very defeatable. Uh, the and one issue that I can foresee is the Colts' defense is not that great. This is the thing, though, is that the Chiefs' defense started out really great, but as the season went on, they kind of played subpar. Yeah, because key players were injured, and those players are back. I don't know. I mean, I, it's going to be in Indianapolis. I think it's mm -hmm. going to be the other factor is that um, Luck's going to be having a... Luck doesn't have as much pressure going into this playoff game, I don't think, because last year was his first playoff game. He had some struggles. I think this year he's much more confident. And the Chiefs... Um, the Chiefs, I think, are still kind of trying to figure out a few things on offense. They're getting some key players back on defense. Um, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, though. I think the Colts have this one in the bag. I don't think that it's as easy as you're making it out to be, but I think I, I think they'll come out with the win, but it's going to be a hard fought one. Well, I, okay, I wouldn't say it's in the bag for them. It's good. I agree, it will be a hard fought, but I see the Colts winning by by ten. Or do you think? I, I think it's going to be within a score. Okay. Wow, we last year we had like twenty minute videos on. Four playoff games this year. We're already for, through the first one with two minutes. Uh, that's because last year those were the only games that we focused on. This is true. As opposed to looking at all the other games leading up to this. So we know the team's a bit better. We're not trying to establish that we know what we're talking about. We've talked about these teams before. We know where we're going. Uh, it, But some more things that we can say about this game... Uh, this is Andy Reid's first playoff game with the Chiefs. Uh, they went from first pick of the entire draft to having the option of making a run for the Super Bowl, and I, I can honestly see them doing it. it it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult. It's a bit of a long shot. Yeah, uh, but I can honestly see them pulling it off. Yeah, but the thing is that if the you have to bear in mind the Chiefs. You you said it best that it's a long shot. They they're already facing the number three seed with mm -hmm. the Colts. They would then have to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, should the Bengals should the Bengals win like we had predicted, they would face the number two seed, the Patriots, mm -hmm. and then they'd either have to face the Bengals or the Broncos. So, yes. and the Bengals, I I don't see it making past round two, but mm -hmm. we'll 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 get to that when we. Uh, talk about next week, but I think it, you're, you're right, it is a long shot. But I think they're in the right direction. I think this is a team that's in the right direction. I think Andy Reid's done a lot of stuff for this organization. I think Alex Smith is he's not the elite quarterback that he was initially projected in the NFL draft, but he's mm -hmm. showing that he is working in this system. Well, I'll, I'll ask you this. Uh, Alex Smith has a lot of experience in big games. Oh, yes. That uh, is true. And he's shown that he can pull through them very well. Luck, on the other hand, has a few big games where he's done well and a few big games where he's just absolutely flopped. This is true. That, that's a fair point. Um, you know, that's, that, that's, I think Luck has more overall talent. Mm-hmm. But I think that Alex has, uh, that Smith has uh, the experience, and I think that's going to be in his favor. And they're they're going to be looking at the uh, tape because mm. memory serves they only put up a single touchdown in like the first game against the Colts. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be looking at. Uh, I mean, this was never an offensive team. Once the defense started struggling, that's when they started finding their offensive identity, and I think that's going to really help them in this game. Yeah. I've still got the Colts, though. I, 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 I still have the Colts, but uh, Andrew Luck's uh, it inexperience is. in playoff situations, uh, in, in games with such big stakes, 
And I think this has the potential to be an upset for the Colts. Yes. Um, anything about that? Um, not really. Uh, we, we've we seen the Chiefs go from undefeated to slightly defeated. Well, that's that's the other thing I guess I want to touch on, Rick, is that they started out 9-0, and finished 11-5. and They went 2-5 and in the last seven games. They're mm. really... They're, they're on a losing streak, but at the same time, like we went over, that was with two of their most nice. important players missing. Yeah. Okay, so next game we have the Eagles and the Saints. We both have the Eagles on this one solely because it is in Philadelphia. And this is one of those things where I strongly support the NFL's decision to possibly reseed it by record. I'm not sure what you think about that, though. Um, I, I agree. Because you, you look at the Saints, this is the second time that they've kind of been screwed mm. in the playoffs. The first time being Seattle. I mean, if you have a losing record, you should not be having a home playoff game. I don't care if you won your division. I, I don't care. It really should be based on the... Uh, but it should be based on the record, and yes, Drew Brees is a is a dome is a dome quarterback. He plays better in, inside. He can't play. He he can't. It's not that he can't play out, mm -hmm. out outside. It's that he can't play on the road. Yeah, and that's his one weakness as a quarterback is that he just cannot play on the road. At the same time, you'd think that this is the perfect defense for him to go against. Uh, if we look at the uh, Predator defense, as it's called, uh, the Eagles very much so are focused on the idea of attacking. When Chip Kelly came in with the system, he said uh, to his defensive coordinator, uh, the offense is going to be attacking. If you aren't attacking as well, then you are doing something wrong. Uh, the offense will make up for any mistakes that you make. They're very focused on just getting to the quarterback, getting all of those big plays, but they will give up those big plays as well. Yeah, and I think that they rely a lot. It, this is a lot like, it reminds me of the Packers uh, in that they rely so much on Aaron Rodgers making up for the mm. defensive mistakes that they, that they had so many big plays on defense, mm. but they also gave up a lot of plays. See, but they're not looking at it as mistakes. They're looking at it as cost of being aggressive. Yeah, I see. Um, but the thing that I the thing that I have again, this all focuses on the fact that we're playing outside, it's going to be really cold and all of that really seems to affect Drew Brees. Yes. And that, that is his one weakness as a quarterback. And it's a crippling weakness. Yes, but at the same time he's very good at exploiting those holes. Yes, but he's also 0-5 on the road. Yeah. I mean, I'm still giving the game to the Eagles. But. Yes. So, I mean, I guess the really only thing is that I would strong. I think this should the Eagles mm -hmm. win this game. I really think the NFL is going to look at possibly reseeding it by record. It's possible. All right. Next up, we have the Bengals and the Chargers. A lot of these games, you know, now that I'm looking at them, they all have the potential to be trap games because. Like you said, there are there there is the exploitable factor with the Saints. How Drew Brees can can right. exploit these mistakes on the Eagles. We just talked about the we just talked about the Chiefs. I mean, we Colts. didn't even talk about we we really didn't go into the that game uh, at all. Well, do you want to go back then? I, I kind of do. Okay. Well, um, what else do you want to add? Uh, well, the first thing that we need to go over is looking at how the Eagles' offense functions versus how the Saints' defense functions. All right. Uh, with how Rob Ryan brought in this new system for the Saints' defense, yes. it's been very opportunistic. They've been one of the stronger defenses in the entire league, uh, and, and they have slowed down some very potent teams. Yeah, but the thing with the Eagles is that I've noticed is that they are, they're kind of like a juggernaut in that once they get moving, yeah. you can't stop them. Yes, but at the same time, they're a very power run team. Whereas the Saints have been very strong against the run, if I recall correctly. They are. But this is something I've noticed, is that you cannot let the Eagles get this momentum. Because yeah. once they have that momentum, you can't stop them. So that, That's true, but at the same time, if you're looking at such a strong run team, and that is what their offense is predicated upon... 
You you have to see the uh, there there's oh, at least that potential for mismatch I, I, there as well. I understand that, but you also have to look at the way Nick Foles has played. He has been yes. very very efficient, and if they key in on the run, if they're if they're focused more on stopping the run, that's going to give Nick Foles a lot of opportunities through the air. Yes, but at, have... at the same time, him being effective through the air has been completely decided by how well LaShawn McCoy is doing. I, I, I kind of disagree with that. I, I think that, yeah, LaShawn McCoy's play has been a factor, but I think a lot of it is that Nick Foles is, he's, he's shown that he is, he's very good at decision making. He's, he, he's not really much of a game manager. See, I, I would actually disagree with that. I don't think he's a good decision maker. If you look at a lot of his game tape, uh, he makes a lot of mistakes. He, th he has thrown multiple should-be interceptions uh, that have been called back for various reasons, penalties on the defense, uh, or just dropped interceptions, that I, I really do question his decision. So you think he's more of a gunslinger? I, I do think that he is. Uh, he hasn't earned that title yet, but... Well, part of this is you also have to bear in mind that he was drafted last year. Yeah. He was the backup all. He was. He's kind of in the same situation as uh, Kaepernick was in that. Mm -hmm. And I guess that this this is the potential for him to be kind of like Kaepernick next year, and that he might he might regress. But, a but lot at of, the same time, he started playing last year as well. I think, but for a very very limited amount of time. Yes. Uh, but. The reason that Kaepernick did so well last year, as we'll go over with the 49ers-Packers game, uh, he did well because no one had tape on him. And I think that's the way with Nick Foles, is that everyone was prepared going into the season to yes. stop Michael Vick. They didn't know about Nick Foles, though. Yes. And midway through, he, he came in and just, he, he put up yes. like, I believe he put up like 25 touchdown passes? It, it, I believe it was 27 and 2. Yeah, well, I, it was some. It, it's really impressive, yeah. and you can't. You but really if you can't. look at the later weeks, he did regress once people started figuring him out. This is true. Um, I, I I think it's going to come down to can the Saints can the Saints keep them from getting that momentum? Do you think that's possible? I do think it's uh, possible, especially if they do focus on stopping the Sean McCoy. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add? Um, not especially. Um, I, I think one player to watch on the Eagles will be Brandon Boykin. Uh, he's been having a very good run the last few weeks. Uh, in that in that secondary, he's been quite opportunistic, and has been coming up with some big plays. So, we'll we'll see how he affects Drew Brees. Indeed. All right, next up we have the Bengals and the Chargers. As I said, this has the potential to be a trap game because the Chargers this year have... I, I don't really know if they deserve to be in the playoffs, to be honest. I'm not sure if I would consider them... Okay, I'll, I'll ask you this before you say that. Would you have the Chargers in the playoffs before the Packers? Well, well... Uh, Actually, no, I would. I would have the Packers in before. Why is that? The Packers. A lot of the Packers' struggle has been with the fact that Aaron Rodgers has been out. Mm -hmm. A lot of those losses were attributed to that. Philip Rivers, on the other hand, has started every game for the Chargers. Mm -hmm. So they've had the consi They've had the same player as quarterback. See, but their offense has been consistent. It's their defense that hasn't. Well, Philip Rivers has also shown numerous games, mm -hmm. not just in the in this season, but in the past, whenever he made the postseason, that he can be highly erratic. He's either really good or really mm -hmm. bad. And but I, I think Weisenhunt has done a great job with him bringing that sort of renaissance to his career. And I agree, but we have to look, is this going to be the, the Philip Rivers that's been showing up, making these clutch plays, making show, having these clutch games throughout the season? Or is he going to be the same old Philip Rivers, which choked in the postseason? See, I think this is the Philip Rivers of the year that he was drafted when he was compared to Aaron Rodgers and decide, and people decided he was better. I don't think he's necessarily better, but I think he's of that caliber this year. Well, 
I want to. I we'll get back onto that. I want to kind of focus on to something else though. Would you take Dalton over Rivers? No. Why is that? I honestly don't like Dalton as a quarterback. Um, he, while he is a good decision maker and game time manager, uh, he does not have the arm for some of the throws that he makes. Yes, but he does seem to have some great chemistry with some of his yes. friends, like A.J. Green. I don't see that same chemistry with Philip Rivers. Really? I do. Because if you look at one of his biggest targets this year, and it's steadily increased in Keenan Allen, he's had great chemistry with him. Okay, but the other thing I want to talk about um, between uh, Rivers and Dalton is that Rivers has been out of the playoffs for mm -hmm. quite some time now. Dalton yeah. has made the playoffs each year he's been in the league. I mean, this yeah. is only his third year. But Dalton has been able to come away with a win mm -hmm. in each each of those years. Yes. He, he went one and one in each year. But Rivers has shown that he can be one and done numerous times. And I think that you have to bear in mind in that in those past he had mm -hmm. a lot of he had a lot of talent. He had Ladanian Tomlinson, he had Vincent Jackson with him, mm -hmm. and he still couldn't get the job done. So is is his play going to be effective going into the playoffs? I think yes, because uh, looking at those past seasons, they were under coaches that really weren't inspiring him to do well. But they did really well in the regular season. You have to bear that in mind. They yes. have some really great numbers. Yes, but you also have to look at who does he work well with, who do the other players work well with, and, and I think that the coaching situation has him in such a fashion that he will do well. And uh, did we even state that we both picked the Bengals on this? No, I don't think we did. We, <laughs> both, picked, we, we, we both picked the Bengals, but... That's really embarrassing, <laughs> and I'm so sorry. <laughs> We, we, we've been going on about the Chargers, but we both actually have the Bengals on this. I'm, I'm we seem to talk more about the team that we think will lose, uh, ju just so that you're aware, um, if you haven't noticed already. But I'm curious then, you know, you, you bring that up, but why is it that you think the Chargers will lose if you're so high in Rivers instead of Dalton? Because of that inconsistent defense. I see. Um... Do you think that do you think that uh, home field advantage is going to be a factor in this? I, like, re I, I really don't. Because I I don't see like with the Colts, it, I kind of see it with the Eagles. I definitely see it. Um, 49ers and Packers. I we're kind of split we'll, we'll on discuss that. that later. Yeah, but in this game, I really don't think home field advantage is really going to play into that. Mm -hmm. I realize it's the first yeah. home playoff game that they're playing in a while. Because if I'm not mistaken, Dalton's played his, his um, only two, uh, mm -hmm. all of his playoff games were on the road, if I'm I not mistaken. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, because they, they, they were, were wild cards. They were right? wild cards, so they were, so they were on the road. I wonder if that's going to give him any confidence, though, knowing that he's at home. I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, my, my thing with Dalton, uh, I, I'm not confident in his, in his abilities, honestly. Uh, he's in the perfect system for him that doesn't expect him to make a lot of high-powered throws, but he still tries to. Like, that, that is where I see his decision-making falter. Yeah, but if he, starts, if, he starts, if he starts getting these big plays against an inconsistent defense, do you think the mistakes on the Chargers will pile up, or do you think Dalton will uh, force the ball one too many times and give the Chargers back the momentum? Uh, I think that it, it kind of goes both ways because he he's shown that he can kind of walk off any bad decisions that he's made, which I find to be a great characteristic. Yes. Uh, sort of being a forgetful quarterback. Yes. Uh, it's the same with cornerbacks. You need to be able to walk away from your mistakes. Uh, but at the same time, he doesn't really learn from his mistakes. I, I okay, I can actually see that. I uh, can agree with that. Yeah, I have not seen Dalton progress at all. He's had a great safety blanket in AJ Green, but I think AJ Green's who what makes him, not the other way around. 
I can see that. And I think that the, char the Chargers are definitely going to be... You're going to see a lot of double teams, triple teams on A.J. Green. And they're going to force him to throw it to other people. Right, and that and that is why other players on the Bengals have done so well. It's because so many people are focusing on A.J. Green, just like the same situation is with Calvin Johnson. Yes. Um, but overall, I mean, I think that this really is a toss-up game. Mm -hmm. It really could go either way. That I, I, I think the Chiefs are at a disadvantage. I think the Saints are at a disadvantage. But I, I think this is very winnable for the Chargers. I, I agree. But still, Bengals over Chargers for both of us. Um, just because they're... They, I, I, I just think that they're the safer pick, if only because of the inconsistency on San Diego's defense. At, at the same time, looking at the Bengals' defense, once Geno Atkins was out, yes, that, they, they became wildly erratic. Oh, and you can see, uh, It's really amazing. Like, you look at the Bears with Henry Melvin, Lance Briggs, and mm. in that case they lost two players, but then that defense just fell apart. Mm. All right, finally, 49ers and the Packers, the one game that we disagree Actually, on. Actually, if we're looking at the Bengals' defense, how confident are we that in that in stopping Phillip Rivers? I think that they... I, I know they're missing Geno Atkins, but they managed to shut down... They managed to keep on par with uh, some of the other uh, big-name quarterbacks. They managed to hold down Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. They managed to... For, they they almost beat Cutler. Mm -hmm. They managed to shut down Flacco. Twenty. Okay, but uh, uh, hold on. D hear me out here. They managed to shut down Flacco after giving up an eleven point lead. Mm -hmm. They 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 came back from giving up an eleven point lead. They didn't panic. Yeah, he started to get those momentum back, but they shut it down. And at, at the same time. Looking at Flacco as an inconsistent quarterback in his own right. Yeah, but you also have to bear in mind it's really hard to sometimes uh, walk have that walk off mentality that if you're making yeah. these mistakes. But I I think that mentality comes more from Mike Zimmer being very aggressive on his defense and making them uh, essentially have to walk it off. Yeah. All right, but is there anything else you want to? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm kind of wavering on this now. <laughs> Great. Now we're at the 22-minute mark. I had to jinx it in the beginning. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just had to jinx it. Still, looking at how, how these teams function, it, it's very, very possible that the Chargers could come out with the win in this. It is. I, not... And it, it, it definitely has made me sway a little. I'm still going with the Bengals. But this seems like the highest possibility for an upset. Yes. All right. Last game, 49ers-Packers. I've got the Niners, he's got the Packers, which is, oddly enough, the opposite of what we had last year. I had the Packers last year, and he had the Niners last year. Yep. So, this is where I wanted to talk about how home field advantage can be affected. He kind of disagrees. This is my case. I realize that the 49ers play... We, we talked about this a bit before, mm -hmm. is that this is, they're expecting negative 45 with wind chill. Yep. Going into this game, colder than the ice bowl. What are you doing to the pop podium? Nothing. So they're, they're talking about this really cold team, but at a certain point you have to wonder, when does that start mm -hmm. to hurt the home team? I think after a while, yes, the Packers are an outside team. Yes, they're used to the cold and San Fran's mm -hmm. used to the warm. But after a while, that's going to start affecting the other team, too. Yes. And Grand, yeah, I think Green Bay is going to be a little more prepared. But after a while, you have to wonder, does it really matter how prepared they See, are? See, my thing is, they've been practicing in this for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, but not to this extent. It's But just at the same starting. time, looking at the weather report, it's been in the negatives while they've been practicing. Yeah, but a part of me, have they been practicing outside? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I guess that they have that for them. But one of the things that I've noted with the 49ers is that they they're a more balanced they're they're a more balanced team. Mm -hmm. I believe that Rodgers is the, the better quarterback despite losing mm -hmm. Kaepernick twice. I believe he's the better one. As we've talked about before, it's because like Nick Foles, there was no game tape on him. Yes. 
And you could even say that's why Kaepernick was able to scorch the Packers again, even though they had the game tape, is that right. they, he, they still didn't know too much about him. As but that, that's out. why Kaepernick has struggled this year. It's because people have Caught seen on. the tape and figured him out. But with that said, the 49ers as a whole seem to be in a better position. They, mm-hmm. the, the only real advantage that I see the Packers having is the quarterback situation, which they find, they have Aaron Rodgers back. He's shown that he's shaken mm-hmm. off the rust. That he sh- he's he's shown that yes, he still has his rhythm. He's not mm-hmm. he's not being thrown back into it. But I think that the defense on the 49ers is far superior, especially with Clay yes. Matthews out. I feel Frank Gore has much more experience than Eddie but, Lacy. But if you're looking at how the uh, the weather affects, they're not going to be going for as big of plays. They're not going to be going for as dramatic of downfield passes. They're not going to be going oh, for... Oh, yeah. But you so know. that means that the Green Bay defense can concentrate as opposed to having to spread itself thin, which has always been their weakness. Yes, but this is the other thing, is that you have to realize Kaepernick has not been has been horrible in the passing game. Scrambling, mm-hmm. on the other hand, has been his thing. Yes, you but if, if the Packers are able to concentrate, they'll be able to crack down on the run more easily. But will they? Be? But will with Frank Cor and Kaepernick, they're both really tough to bring down. They're both yes. really, they both know how to make plays. They and, do. They do. But and let's say I, 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 again, they don't necessarily need to make a big play here. Mm-hmm. If if Kaepernick just needs to ch- chuck it like ten yards down, mm-hmm. 10, 15 yards. That could turn into a big play itself. Yes. I, I see them having a situation where they they key on on the run and he just does a check down field and that turns into a big game. Mm-hmm. And I think that Kaepernick has played against. He's very familiar mm-hmm. with how the defense of Green Bay works. But I think that the defense is going to have to adapt to the weather because that's going to have that limiting factor. The ball is going to be hard. Uh, the quarterback will not be able to throw it as hard as far. Well, you go on saying that they can't make those big theatrical plays. Yes. So will that affect Aaron Rodgers? I know that he's been practicing in this weather, but with... I would say uh, not as much as you would think, because if you look at most of his production, it's almost all in that slot, middle-ranged area. Well, he, here's the other thing, is that when you, you have to bear, pra- bear in mind practice... Mm-hmm. He doesn't have to worry about running for his life yes. during practice. This 49ers defense is, yes. is scary good at getting to the quarterback. Yes. With players like Aldon Smith, I mean, this is this is a defense that knows how yes. to pressure the quarterback. Which is why I think this is going to play exactly into Rodgers' strong suit. He's very much so a get-the-ball-out-quick quarterback. And that's why you see all of these passes in the middle range. Here's the other thing, and this is something I kind of want to touch touch up on before. I think we talked about this a little bit last year, mm-hmm. but it seems that, you know, you take away the postseason run with Rodgers going, this is another factor that just kind of hit me on the spot. This is something mm-hmm. we didn't talk about. You take away the postseason run where Rodgers went 4-0, won the Super Bowl. You take away that season, and his postseason record is not all that impressive. But then again, same for most quarterbacks. I, I realize that. I realize that. But hear me out on this. We were talking about this before mm-hmm. that is is Rodgers one of those is is he one of those teams quarterbacks that might fall into the the likes of Peyton Man where he's one and done. Mm-hmm. Uh, I honestly don't think that he is, especially with home field advantage. This is the thing, though. If you look at the Packers uh, as of late. Home field advantage really doesn't dump them any favors. That's true, but I think the temperature swing is definitely going to help them. It's like a 100 degree swing for the 49ers, yeah, which is absolutely ridiculous. I, I realize that, but as I said, and this is something we I know we said we yeah. kind of disagree, you have to wonder, is it going to be an advantage or is it going to yeah. be an equal disadvantage? I, I think it's going to be an unequal disadvantage. So, so you're saying that both te- teams will be hindered, the Packers will just be hindered plus. Right. I can kind of, okay, I can kind of see that. But I also think that when the, the 49ers arrived to the training facility, that they were practicing outside too, if I'm not mistaken. 
I believe they were, yes. So um, they're they're not going to be as acclimated. Yeah. But they know that it's not like they're being thrown right into the Right. They're not being thrown right into the freezer. So they're <laughs> so they're going to be so they have sort of an idea of what to expect, and that's also where I feel like part of the advantage gets taken away. It, it's possible, but looking at the strategies that both teams will use, uh, Kaepernick's very much a downfield passer, whereas Rodgers is more of a midfield passer. I think that Rodgers is more suited to win this game. It, it's possible, but you also, uh, part of me really thinks that the Green Bay defense is very suspect, mm-hmm. and that Kaepernick knows he knows how to he knows how to play against them. He's put mm-hmm. up over a thousand yards in two games against Green Bay. Yes, and seventy nine points. Yeah. So he knows how to he knows what to expect. He knows what. But at what, the same time, like you were pointing out, those were two games where the Packers didn't really have much tape on him. Yes, but he has plenty of tape on Green Bay. Right. Now Green Bay has a lot of tape on him. They have a full season's worth and the half a season or so that he played last year. They have an idea of how he plays. They have an idea of how to stop him. They know exactly who his favorite weapons are. It's possible, but I I still think that there's a a slight edge to the 49ers. I'm not not saying Mm -hmm. this is going to be a blowout or or a two-score blowout. Get, mm. two or three score, I think it's going to be a very slight edge to the 49ers. Mm. I just, uh, uh, all in all, it just gets to the fact that, yes, they have more film, but I also think mm-hmm. that, the, uh, getting back to my main point, the 49ers just are more, a more complete team. Yes and no. I mean, if we look at the Packers' defense, they... They're without their best player, though. The, they're without their best player. I, I was going to bring that into the equation. Um, they are good in certain situations, mostly being that putting quarterbacks out of their element, that's where they thrive. Okay, and that's fair. But I have one one real final point I want to bring into this before we close out, I guess, unless mm-hmm. you have anything else you want to add. Do you think that Green Bay's defense is confident that they can beat San Fran? They've lost the last three games by mm-hmm. more than a touchdown. They have not yeah. been able to keep it close. I believe Rodgers has the confidence that he can he can put up points, mm-hmm. but do you think Green Bay's defense has that confidence? I think I think it's a lot like the Eagles situation where they have the opinion of it's an, a high octane offense and that can bail out the defense if the defense makes mistakes or lets up a big play. Uh, and and, uh, and that, that's in the design of the team. Okay. But, uh, do you say you... Honestly, this is really... In, it's going to be a, an interesting game because, you know, you look at both mm-hmm. how both these teams have played each other before and it's been both of them high-scoring games, but this mm-hmm. the weather is going to limit those big plays. Yeah. And uh, I guess really only... The last thing I want to add is that if you are going to this game, stay warm, stay safe. Um, we read that Green we, Bay's offering like free hand, free warmers, hand warmers, free coffee, free hot chocolate. And if you want to go to the game, that's more. But just stay safe, just stay warm. Yeah, just going back to the ice bowl. Someone did die of the cold at that game. Uh, the band had to go to the hospital for hypothermia. So yeah, just uh, stay safe. I. I I don't like Pack. I don't like the. I don't like Green Bay. I don't like their fans. But I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm, I just. Everybody going to this game. Just stay warm. Yeah. Just stay safe. Bring like three coats and blankets. And for the love of God, if I see the bikini girls out there, I will just have to bang my head into the wall. <laughs> to each their own, and to each their own hypothermia. Indeed. All right. Anything else you want to add? Nope. All right, this has been Cage Fight Football Predictions, and we're past the half hour mark. I had to jinx it. <laughs> All right, I, I thought this would be quick. Well, we'll see you guys next week. And uh, I'm Joe, he's Adam. And this will probably be the last one that we're in person because he's going back to school soon. So yep. we'll see you guys then. Take it easy. <laughs>